Are you looking to overlay points on top of an image or a map? Well, if you are, then points is exactly what you need. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the awesome Points 2 update. And we're gonna go over a lot of the features and see some of the great new enhancements that we now have in Points 2. So here we are on the Points 2 demo page, and what we're gonna do right now is we're going to pinpoint all of the amazing features of the new Points 2 stack. So if we look at this first demo of the Points stack, we'll see that this is a great kind of typical use case of what you would use Points for. Here we have nice pulsating points that highlight various parts and details of an image. And when we hover over each point, you'll see that we have a nice information point about each individual detail on the image. If we scroll down to our next demo, this demo is a little bit more involved. As you'll see here, I have multiple points configured on top of a map of Brazil. And in this particular situation, I'm highlighting all of the cities that contained games in the World Cup in 2014. Now what you'll notice is that we have multiple points they have um, icon, soccer ball icons um, as the points, but not only that, um, each one is a different color or they can be different colors, right? I have some that are yellow with blue dots. I have some that are, uh, you know, blue balls with white accents, okay? And lastly, I have the capital city of Brasilia as a star. So I have the ability to customize each individual uh, point as I see fit. Now, just as before, you'll notice that when I hover over, we get a nice little tooltip that explains about that point. In this case, I'm highlighting what the actual city is. Also notice that the cursor for the mouse changed as well uh, to a magnifying glass. And that kind of portrays that I want the user to maybe click on this. And what happens is when we click on this, we'll see that points integrates with many different light boxes. In this one in particular, I'm opening a light box that shows us a picture of the soccer stadium in Brasilia where the World Cup was played. And I have that same feature integrated into every city, where if you click on that particular city, you'll get the image of the stadium where that World Cup game was played. This is a great way to provide rich, um, kind of exploratory data for your users. Now maps are an obvious choice for points, right? So here's another example of maps. And in this particular example, this is not just an image that I'm overlaying inside points. This is my Google Maps stack. So what I've done is I've actually allowed points where you can drop any stack that you want into points, okay? And then have that stack have points overlaid on top of it. Now this really works best with image-based stacks only, right? Because images will scale proportionally from desktop down to mobile. So in this example, I'm overlaying some of the default points on top of a map. Now, if you notice in this example, instead of a tooltip, we actually have a fixed toolbar area at the bottom that is displayed whenever you hover over a point. This is great if you want to provide a little bit more information than what could potentially look good inside of a tooltip. Now in this next demo, what you'll notice is instead of the kind of the dot uh, points that we've seen in previous demos, okay, we're actually using images for each point. So here I've gotten an image of a little pin point that you can you know, get from online and just drag and drop that into the stack. And not only that, but I can have different image pins for every single point on my map. Here I've only decided to use two different images. I have a red one for all the points that land on a land, okay? And then I have blue ones for all the water-based points on the map. If you notice, just like on the previous example, when you hover over each one, we have a nice little tooltip area on the bottom that shows us a little bit more information about each particular point. Now, what I've done in this example is I've actually added links to every single point. So when I click on a link, it actually opens up a Wikipedia page in this example, okay? But it could be any URL. And here I have it opening in a new tab. However, you could use this to maybe generate an interesting menu for your site, right? Add links to particular pages on your site to each point. 
so that users have a nice and interesting way of navigating through your site via an image. Now, in the last example here, I show a nice way of integrating points with many different stacks. First here, you'll notice that I have two buttons. And this controls a moving box slider in the background where I have a moving box with two point stacks, one in each slide. And when I click on it, you'll notice that the points on my map change. Now the background image is the same for each points stack, okay? But the location of the points change. So this gives a nice, interesting illusion where I can you know, navigate between different points on the map. Now in this particular slide, we're showing off the various utility containers that points can actually integrate with. If you hover over, you'll see that when I click on this particular point, we will get a glider stack. Now on the next point, you'll notice when I hover over it, this is actually triggering glider on hover. This is because you can configure each point to either be based off a click or hover event. And this is nice because when I unhover off, it actually closes glider. This provides us with a nice integration between multiple stacks on my page. Now we can also integrate with dropdown inside foundation to provide nice rich data inside of our points, as well as we can hover over and get that same nice rich dropdown for our point. And last but not least is we can trigger a peekaboo stack, which allows peekaboo to open beneath it. And we can also hover over a point to open up peekaboo as well. Now, if we navigate to the next slide inside this, we can see the light boxes that uh, points will integrate with. And here we have expose and we have reveal inside foundation. We have top box from Will Woodgate, focus from Elixir and many more. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further under the demo page, you'll notice that we have examples of all of the third party integrations that points currently integrates with. Now, if you use the general link tool, you could probably integrate with even more stacks out there. Um, but check with your, you know, the other stacks developers documentation on whether or not that is possible or not. However, we've made some really simple integrations with these stacks to make them extremely easy to use straight within points. Now for this video, I'm not going to be doing a deep dive into all the individual settings inside points. Okay. But I wanted to give you a preview of what points looks like in edit mode and how powerful and revamped the UI is in points too. As you see here, you can add as many points as you want since they are child stacks. Now in the main point stack is where you define all of your defaults in terms of how your points will look, how they're styled, and then you can override all of those settings inside each individual point. Now positioning your points on top of your image couldn't be any easier. Simply change the position of your point and you will see it change on top of your image in real time, straight in Stacks Edit Mode. Now that's all of the amazing features that we have today for the Points 2 stack. I hope that you see how easy it is and how powerful it really can be for you. Now, in terms of a lot of the demos, in my demos, I used a lot of maps, right? Now, maps is really the obvious use case for points. Because you can use things as such as products and pinpointing various things on your products. Maybe you have a camera and you want to display what does this button do or what does that button do, right? Or maybe you have a car and you want to pinpoint the amazing tires or the hood or the exhaust or the engine or the interior, right? And then you can click on those points and get more detail on it, right? Points is a very powerful tool and it allows you to do something different with your website other than just having a simple menu and web pages. Right? I'm really excited to see what you use points for and how you can make your websites even better with it. Now, another thing is points is completely responsive. So as the image inside points shrinks down, you can also customize the actual size of the points. This way that you can have large points on desktop and those large points don't look huge on mobile because they can shrink down and become smaller as well. So I hope you enjoy points. I can't wait to see what you build with it. Now, make sure you watch if you are looking for a more detailed tutorial on how to implement points. 
make sure that you check out our detailed overview that I go over every single setting for you. Until then, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Enjoy points. Bye.